And this is the same problems with radioactive dating and carbon-14 dating. How is a rock like an hourglass? On the left we have what are called parent isotopes and on the right we have what are called daughter isotopes. Carbon-14 is a parent isotope, it's radioactive and it's unstable and it changes into nitrogen-14 over time. It has what's called a half-life. Now, scientists will try to date different rocks and fossils using these different radioactive isotopes. Let me explain how it works. With carbon-14, an animal takes in carbon-14 by eating grass. The grass has carbon-14 in it, and the, the grass then goes into the animal and it has carbon-14 in it. Over time, animals keep taking in carbon-14, but when they die, they stop taking in carbon-14. All the while, the carbon-14 is changing into nitrogen-14. But once they die, they're no longer adding any carbon-14 into their system. So theoretically, you could say that a dead animal that has a whole lot of nitrogen-14 in it has been dead a lot longer than a dead animal with just a little bit of nitrogen-14 in it. And this is how they use radioactive dating. They say, if I have a rock that has a whole, much, a whole bunch of a daughter isotope in it, and I have another rock that has a lot less of a daughter isotope in it, then the rock with more daughter isotope is older than the rock with less daughter isotope. But what's our problem? Remember the three assumptions we talked about with the hourglass? Assumption one. The amounts of parent and daughter isotopes at the beginning, when the rock formed, must be known. That means you have to know your initial conditions. How much sand was in the top of the hourglass when the hourglass started running? The problem is you don't know what the initial conditions were. A rock may have a whole bunch of the parent isotope, or it may have a little, or it may have a whole bunch of the daughter isotope, or it may have a little. You don't know. Assumption two. All the daughter atoms measured today must only have been derived by radioactive decay in that rock. There can be no contamination that took place, but in reality, daughter isotopes will leach in and out of a rock. So water will bring daughter isotopes in, making the rock look older than it actually is. Assumption three, the radioactive decay rate must have been constant at today's measured rate, a constant decay rate. The problem is we've only been dating rocks and fossils for about 100 years using radioisotope dating. So how do we know that the rate has been consistent over billions of years? We don't know. These are three assumptions that literally cannot be known. None of these assumptions are provable. The past cannot be observed and measured. So these assumptions are not even reasonable. Daughter atoms may be inherited when rock forms, and subsequent contamination is common. This makes it impossible to determine the age of the Earth based on radioisotope dating. There was an eight-year creationist research project to investigate radioisotopes and the age of the Earth, and it concluded that assumption three, that is a constant decay rate, is absolutely false. They found that you can change the rate of decay based on the environment in which the isotopes are located.